try to explain a little bit some of this um, ideas behind the uh, stages of, a, of premature or four stages of bearing failure using some uh, of my son's toys in my wife's art studio. So um, I want to show you what I made. So here what we're looking at is, um, uh, well, it's Play-Doh. You know, it's it's just your regular um, dollar store Play-Doh. But what I've tried to make here and what I'm trying to simulate is uh, a bearing race. So all steel has a crystal structure to it laying in the bearing race. Um, any, if you take any fastener that you've broken off or any kind of like broken, if you look at cast iron, um, you look at um, something that's been galvanized and dipped in zinc, you can see the crystal structure in, in the metal. So I kind of wanted to walk through and show you this. So I'm going to first try it with this plastic bag. And then I've got um, some of my son's um, toys here. And the first, so for the first stage, what ends up happening is that all of these um, crystals, so I've, I've made them all, mixed them all up in colors here. All of these crystals have a kind of a hexagon or a, a cubic shape to them. And they're of all varying sizes and they're all different orientations, degrees, and the, how they're set up. And the bond in between the cranes of the crystals are the weak points. That's where the fractures and the breaks kind of happen. So as a bearing has a bearing or has a rolling element roll across it, and then the next one rolls across it, what ends up happening is the metal has plastic properties to it. So that roller, as it goes across here, it actually pushes down and it flexes and it depresses and then as it rolls over on top, it springs back, like almost like a, like a plastic or a rubber would. Even though it's a very, very fine amount, that's what's actually happening as these are rolling over. Now, mind you, there's also some oil in there to keep things separated, but just the general pressure that's happening, it's flexing and making those crystals um, compress over time. So what ends up happening, the first thing that starts to happen to this crystal structure is not a crack on the surface here. It starts cracking down below here at the bottom. So like the underneath part, it, the flexing and the cracks are starting to happen inside of here. And that's the first stage. Now we can tell that with our accelerometer because as the roller goes across that part, let's say for example that we have a, a, a crack right here. So let's say, for example, like let's say we have a crack that kind of forms down inside of here. So I'll try and draw it in black. So let's say that's a crack there. As this roller goes across here, it's going to flex and it's going to depress more in that spot. So for that little fraction of time, we're actually going to pick up a slight, um, it, the, the strength and the the crystal structure has been compromised. So there's a little bit more of a flex in that situation where you find that crack starting to happen. And it's not just gonna be one crack that's gonna happen. It's gonna start being all of the cracks between all of these. They're all gonna kind of start to break down and um, depending on where the bearing is and um, in, its, in its cycle. And then um, what eventually is gonna happen is that crack is going to come up and it's going to come across the top. Okay, so that's your second phase, stage two. And when the, when the crack comes to the top, what ends up happening is, as the roller goes across, um, there's a small little indentation that will happen. So as the roller comes across and hits that, you get and get a kind of a spike, you're going to get a hammering effect. It's going to actually be a collision. It's not like it's not a flexing or a fatigue anymore. Now there's actually a spot that's going to be on that raceway that when that bearing rolls across, it's actually going to um, get it give you a little bit of a spike, kind of like if you had a hammer, you know, if you think oh, you have a hammer and uh, 
or you have two children's toys and then you hit, there's going to be an actual shock that's happening as that roller comes across. And that's where you see that spike in that pickup. So you're first going to find that those cracks starting to form. And then after a little while, that's going to pick up. And then you're going to see an increase in the amplitude of the acceleration reading of your high end of your spectrum. And then as this continues to go, then the next phase that's going to happen is going to be that that crack is going to actually start to peel these um, crystals away on top. Okay, so I peeled it out of the plastic there, but let's just say that this is where the crack was formed. Um, let's say it was formed kind of along, along here. I'll try and draw it and I'm probably messing up my marker. But if that's the case, then as the bearing elements, rollers roll across that, if there's a crack right here that's formed, it's gonna pick it up. And then eventually what's gonna happen is one of these crystals is gonna just get torn out. So it's gonna be there and it's gonna, this is gonna roll across it. I'm not gonna push it back in, but it's gonna actually flake and it's gonna remove one of those crystals. And then as the rollers continue to roll over that spot, then you're gonna end up getting another crystal that's gonna get peeled out. And another one. And that's what we call spalling. So these crystals all start getting peeled out one after another, after another, right? And then, so now what's happened is you've gotten all these crystals that have started to kind of get ripped out. And what's now happened is that it's a longer range. It's not just one little crack anymore, but it's actually a longer range that the roller goes across. And so if you remember, frequency equals one divided by the period of time. So if the period of time is increasing because this spall is growing and more and more of these crystals disappear, well, now what you're gonna see is the frequency spike on your spectrum is going to start creeping down towards the lower end of the spectrum. And the rate of speed that that's traveling is what we use to predict the length of time that a bearing will last. Now, when we get into the last part, we were at stage three, that's when this whole bearing has been completely um, peeled away and all of these spalls are starting to really um, get chunked out and we have a really long rough patch. And that's when, um, you know, that's the point where you need to get in and change the bearing. And then the final, um, part or the stage four of the bearing is when this thing is just ground and it's just turned into a complete mess and it's just metal on metal and this thing is like these rolling elements aren't rolling across it anymore they're just sliding sideways and they turn into squares and that's your stage four so that is um, in a nutshell the four different stages of bearing failure